Groups are an essential part of the workflow in SketchUp, and that's what I would like to focus on in this tutorial video. What I have on my screen right now are two cubes. One is five by five, and one is two by two. They were simply created with a rectangle and a push-pull, and they are not groups, they're not components or anything right now, so they're just simply created. Once we have something like this, if we recall, we can select by either clicking on a face or an edge, double clicking on a face to get the face and all the edges that it makes up, or we can triple click on it and get the entire thing. When something's freestanding like this, we also have the option of doing a large crossing selection to get the entire object as well. So these objects are standalone. We're able to select the object, do something like move, move it from one location to the next without trouble. But these objects have never interacted. If these objects were to touch each other, something interesting happens in SketchUp that doesn't necessarily happen with other software. So this little cube is selected. I'm going to click on the corner point and snap it right here onto my larger cube. I'm going to get out of that function and now we'll see that these two are just sitting side by side. That doesn't seem like a big deal. Well, what if I change my mind and I decide I want to move this smaller one away? Well, if I double click, you'll see that the activity is the same. Or if I single click, I'm able to select edges and faces. But if I triple click, now it reads this entire thing as one shape. It's no longer two separate cubes. It's fused them all together. That's what SketchUp does. When something touches, they're basically glued together. I could probably sit and work my way through, hold down the shift key, and select different edges and faces, but that would take you know a long time and is not a good way to work. So what we want to do is actually group them to prevent this kind of behavior. Once we have something like this, even if I'm able to select some of it, generally what happens when you try to move is that it'll do this type of thing. That's not what we want to have happen. There are times when that particular behavior is actually desirable when you're trying to create some angles and things like that, but that's not what we want right now. I'm just going to undo, and I'm actually going to just undo back to when these were two separate cubes. When they're separate, I can select one entirely and right click and say make group. That's probably the fastest way to do it. You'll see there's other options when you right click, but the one we're interested in right now is simply make group. It doesn't really look like anything particularly exciting happened, but this is now a, a joined together group. We can always get rid of that group by simply right clicking and saying explode, but we want to keep it together. So now you'll see that I'm able to just click on this small cube and it's all selected. If I come over to this larger one, if I just click on it, it's still all separate. And if I click on it three times to get all selected, it looks a little bit different. It has this shaded look all over it where this has a bolder line around it. This one's a little bit hard to see because what it actually does is put a cube around your object, but when your object's already a cube, it's a little hard to see. So what we can do now is actually go in and edit the group and make a change, and you'll see what I mean. To make an edit to a grouped object, you can double click on it, and what you'll see is that you get this grayed out behavior all around it, really greened out, I suppose. I can click away from it to end that. I can also right click and say edit group. Either way it gets me to the same thing. A double click or a right click and edit group. Once I've done that, I'm able to see everything that's contained in my group. It just happens to be this cube in this case. So I'm just going to make some change to it. I'm just going to divide that top surface and do a push pull just to change the shape a little bit. Once I've done that, I can just hit the space bar to get my selection tool and click away from it. And now you'll see that I've been able to edit my group. If I click on it, now you get a better sense of what I mean when it puts that big 
blue framed box around it. So here we have a group and here we have an ungrouped object. Now we should be able to move this one to touch this one and move it away again without it being glued. If I select that, grab move, click the end, put it into place, select away from it. It's essentially what we had before, but now I can click this object again, same move, move it away, and we don't have that sticky behavior. Although you only have to have one of the objects grouped in this case to make that work well, I would highly recommend that you go in and generally group all of your objects. If you don't, you will inevitably put two ungrouped objects on top of each other. Something like that will happen and then you'll have a mess. So it's really just good practice to go in and group objects once you've made them. You'll see that once you have something grouped, like this shape for example, if I pick the Move tool and click on it, you get these grippers on the side. So you actually have the option with the group to move, but also rotate easily. So grouping also has a second benefit in that it gives you these uh, very convenient tools that you don't have when the object is just a standalone. So that's really a great benefit to grouping. Remember, if you want to edit it, you can either double click or right click and say edit group. You can make your changes. Click out of there with the select key and then you're good to go. So grouping is an essential part of the workflow in SketchUp.